Have you ever ended up with footage that looks like this? Now this usually has to do with frame rates. And if you ask YouTube what frame rate to use, there seems to be only one answer. But this answer might be the problem a lot of times. Most of these YouTubers are based out of North America. And apart from creating epic content, they're dealing with a 60 Hertz power grid. That means they're using 24, 30, 60 and 120 frames per second. That's called NTSC. On the other hand, the majority of the rest of the world, if you take a look at this map, are using 25, 50, 100 frames per second or PAL or CCAM. The problem is when you set your camera in the wrong frame rate, you're usually gonna end up with flickering lights, especially if you're planning on slowing down that footage. And same thing goes with screens. If you have a TV or a computer screen in your frame. So this can be super difficult to spot, especially on a tiny camera screen if you're out shooting. And if there's just a little tiny light somewhere in the background. But once this light starts blinking, it can easily steal the attention and the focus from the main subject, making it very, very distracting. I know this sucks, especially if you're one of those people that loves shooting everything in slow motion and you realize that you might be limited to 50 frames per second instead of 60, so less slow motion. But I mean, it's not a huge difference. And I mean, if we compare NTSC with PAL, NTSC uses 525 lines per image while the PAL standard uses 625. So that's 20% more image information, meaning that PAL actually has better image quality. But of course there's situations where you don't have to worry about frame rates or flickering lights. If you're out hiking, for instance, then of course you don't have to worry about flickering lights in the background. Same thing if you're shooting in a controlled space with control lights that you know are flicker free. And this is quite easy to do as a test setup. Just turn on your video lights or lights you normally use for a video and just film them and see what lights are flickering and what lights are not flickering. If you're traveling abroad, make sure to check what frame rate and what standard to use in that country and set your camera to that before you even get on the plane and stick to that frame rate for the entire trip. And when you get back and start your edit, make sure to have a timeline that correspond with that standard and that frame rate. If you're working on a complex video project and you know you're going to be shooting in uh, Europe and North America and you're wondering what frame rates to use stick to the one that's going to be the bulk of your material and for the other one there's ways that you can set your shutter angle differently than you normally do in order to match it up with the grid frequency and that way you can minimize flickering lights. I screwed up two and a half days of footage from my trip to London because of this mistake and I still live in a PAL country. So I don't want you guys to go through the same horrors that I did. So I hope this video helps. If it did, leave a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio.